Hi guys, welcome back. This is the final module in part one website setup. And in this module, we're going to be talking about conversions. So it's only going to be a pretty quick one. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but just a really basic understanding of, of what a site built for conversions looks like. Um, so the best place to start is actually have something worth converting to. So, I mean, when I'm talking about conversions, from a content marketing point of view, you're, you're probably going to be aiming to get someone to sign up to your newsletter or get them to give you their email address to download an ebook or something like that. You might have a product that sits behind the content and you want to get them to try that product or or inquire about a service or something like that. But often the content, the first port of call is just getting their email address so you can keep marketing the content to them. Um, and it has to be a compelling offer. So if you're trying to get them to sign up for a service, then it has to be a good service that's different, that that is gives them a reason to sign up. If, if it's just signing up for email and for content, then it has to be really, really good content. And often, you know, giving people some sort of bait to sign up because you want to give them some sort of offer that compels them to take action, not just a, a little form that says, please enter your email address and give them no reason to do so. So having great content is obviously very important. You know, someone might come visit your site and then read a blog post, but they just might not feel like opting in. Um, but having great content will get them back to your site and they'll see your site in Google or they'll see some someone tweeting an article from your site. And once they've been to your site a couple of times, then maybe they'll be more interested in opting in. So obviously having great content goes without saying. A really simple design and a design um, is a big factor in conversions. And the more you have on the page, the less people are going to be sure about what you want them to do and that the less focus they're going to have on what you want them to do. So I think simplicity is the best here and I'll show you a couple of examples of that. And obviously a clear opt in. If, if you've got a very clear goal of what you want that person to do, like on the right hand side there, you can see an example. I think this is from Unbounce. Um, you know, it's it's got a clear heading. Do you want higher conversions? Of course I do here's a free trial to, to use their conversion software. Very, very clear, a couple of words, very simple. The color stands out. Um, and in the example there, they've also got an opt-in for their content as well. And sometimes you might have two things. You, you might have the, a software that you want people to try as the ultimate goal, but you might want to just be getting them into your content as a way to get them into that funnel. So in that example there, there's two. If you've only got one um, opt-in, then that's even better. So let's jump over to an example. The example I'm going to show you is Kissmetrics because I just really love this site and it's just so super simple and um, now if you look at their page here, there's only one sidebar widget. You know, if you look at a lot of blogs, you'll just see hundreds of stuff down the left hand side or the right hand side. Kissmetrics just one. And if you go to their blog post, you, you might get another, you might get one more like if they're running a webinar or something like that. But just so simple, it's obvious what they want you to do when you get there you just want to sign up for these email updates and they have amazing content so why wouldn't you do that um, and what else you will notice about this page is really really graphic heavy like these every single one of their posts has its own graphic to do with it um, not too much text on this page here you really have to click into the post to get the details about that and what they want from you is very very clear to opt in there um, and I've sort of employed a similar thing with my site this is an example of a page on my site there's a fair bit of white space and there's just nothing on the page other than the action over here to sign up um, and be notified when we launch the Informally app. And, and after we launch, this will change to, um, to something else. And I've got some examples on here as well about uh, trying to get people to sign, in, sign up for email newsletters for content. And that's something I'm experimenting with as well. So even on the blog, blog page, so if I go into it like a typical podcast, you'll see I've got one clear opt-in that stands out on the right-hand side. And I've only got two other widgets on the page. And blog posts don't even have the iTunes widget there. They've just got these two here. So limit the amount of widgets on the page. Have a really, really clear, something compelling. And I've tried to put, this is an example of a, an email course. I've tried to put something in the headline there and in the text that compels them to want to sign up for that course and to learn more. And then when you click through there, they get a lot more information about that. But the basics of it is just having something that stands out there, not having too much else on the page and um, having a compelling offer. So that's all I'm going to talk about with conversions. There's a lot you can go to. You can do a lot of split testing and you can um, you know, split test titles and opt-in forms and you can do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but I mean, I want to focus this course on content. I just think it's important to get a basic site set up, really clean and simple, set, up, set it up to convert and obviously track that in Google Analytics, which we'll talk about later on. Um, but for now, just make sure you've got a compelling offer and a really clear opt-in and that'll be sufficient. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next part.